Next on 6 News, a house fire sends a small child and his father to a hospital. The Colts prepare for the Dolphins in the first round of the NFL playoffs. We'll tell you how to get tickets to that game and a scare for President-elect Bush's family. 6 News is next. Live from RTV6 Indianapolis, standing up for you, this is 6 News at 11. A holiday house fire sends a toddler and his father to a hospital and wipes out all of that family's belongings. Good evening and Merry Christmas. I'm Ken Owen. More on that in a moment. We want to start off with an update to some breaking news from the north side of the city. A dump truck ran into a light post and knocked the power out in the area of 35th and Boulevard Place tonight. Two workers were briefly trapped inside of the truck because of the downed live wires until power could be shut off. The Mount Perrin Square apartment complex is without electricity, but the power company says it should be back up soon. It is a senior assisted living complex. The Red Cross is now helping the residents. We'll have the latest on 6 News at 5 a.m. And now to Martinsville, where the smoke was so thick a family of five could barely find the door to get out of their burning home this morning. Tonight, a father and his son are hospitalized. Christy Tedesco spoke with some of the family today in our South Bureau. My husband woke up and, and he went and hauled me, called my name, and when I went out there, there was just a bunch of smoke and it was hot and you couldn't breathe or see. In a matter of minutes, this Martinsville home was gutted by flames. Santa's newly delivered Christmas gifts were destroyed. Even the van outside melted. But the Lloyd family got out alive. And I guess everything's gone. Heather Lloyd and her three-year-old daughter Caitlin lost everything material. So did one-year-old Clay. But they didn't lose family members. And that, they say, is what matters most. Where the fire started, investigators are still trying to pinpoint. It's also unclear whether there was a working smoke detector inside the home. But something woke the family up just in time for their escape. Even the family dogs and two iguanas survived. Heather's husband, Chris, and their baby boy, Jacob, will stay overnight in the hospital. Their conditions, stable. Chris had some burns on his hand, and uh, they both had a lot of smoke inhalation. Happy everybody got okay. I have my three little ones, and their daddy's okay, so it's all that matters in the baby. In Martinsville, Christy Tedesco, 6 News. Chris and Jacob Lloyd should be released from the hospital in the morning. The family will stay with relatives in Spencer. They say their home was insured, but all of the contents and the melted vehicle outside were not. If you would like to help the family out, contributions are being accepted by the First National Bank and Trust of Martinsville at 2110 Burton Lane in that city. The zip code is 46151. You can make checks to the Heather Lloyd and Family Fund. President-elect George W. Bush spent much of this holiday in the hospital with his daughter. Austin, Texas doctors performed an emergency appendectomy on 19-year-old Jenna Bush, seen here with her father and her twin sister. She started having abdominal pains today at the Texas governor's mansion. Doctors say she is now in stable condition and is doing fine. Local investigators are coming up empty in the search for a 76-year-old Indianapolis man last seen picking up an inheritance check. Eric Weisfeld reports on the latest in the case of Ken Neal. Ken Neal, Christmas 1999. Opening presents, like he should have done this Christmas Day. But some three weeks ago, Ken Neal disappeared without a trace. Family members knew immediately something wasn't right. It's just not Kenny. Everybody I've talked to and our friends said that's not Ken. Neil's car surfaced at this Eastside Holiday Inn last week. So too did evidence the sheriff's officials say have them believing it's now less likely he'll be found alive. The crime lab's still going through it and we're trying to determine exactly what that is. Um, and until they're done with their forensic tests, we won't know. Neil's family's hopes are also diminishing. As they wonder how many more Christmases they'll spend without him, they can't help but also think of the pain he could be in and that he may be unable to find the help he needs to find his way back. I really believe it. I really believe somebody's hurting. And I just wish they'd let us know where he's at so we can bring him home. Adding to this mystery, we are told that Ken had an inheritance check with him at the time he disappeared worth $16,000. It's never been cashed. In the newsroom, Eric Weisfeld, 6 News. Tonight, Marion County Sheriff's officials say they have no new information on the Ken Neal case. Still no word on test results from the evidence collected from his car. 
A 12-year-old Anderson Middle Schooler raped and beaten on her way to a bus stop is getting a lot of help from her friends. Her classmates at Southside Middle School have raised $500 for a reward fund aimed at catching the attacker. The money will go to anyone who provides information that leads to an arrest or conviction of the person responsible. Teachers and school staff members have also pitched in. Police have not made any arrests in the early December attack. The school is hoping everyone in the community can pitch in. An Anderson woman is dead, her husband in critical condition after a plane crash yesterday. Investigators say the couple's Beechcraft Bonanza crash landed and then cartwheeled off a runway in Albuquerque, New Mexico. A hospital spokesperson says the pilot is identified as Jack Whitaker of Anderson. The female victim was his wife. Investigators say Whitaker did not report any trouble before the crash. They're now trying to de determine what happened. Authorities say the cabin of that plane was filled with Christmas gifts. Colts fans, breathing a big sigh of relief today. The team pulled through in a big way against the Minnesota Vikings yesterday, earning a spot in the NFL playoffs. Coach Jim Mora met with the media today, and Tim Bragg has more on that. Tim? Ken, thank you very much. Three weeks ago, it appeared as if the Indianapolis Colts would be finished with their season. At the same time, Santa Claus was done with his. But after Sunday's win over the Vikings at the Dome, this team soars into the playoffs with a three-game winning streak and a lot of confidence. The Colts found out during the first quarter uh, during their game Sunday, the Jets had lost in Baltimore and that all they needed to do was win to extend the season. Their big players came up huge. Peyton Manning had three TD throws in the first half. Colts were up 21 to 10 at halftime. Then Manning threw a fourth TD in the second half as the Colts blew away the talented Vikings 31 to 10. There's the end of Edger and James touchdown reception, a 52 yarder that pulled, put the Colts up 21 to seven in the second quarter. A year ago, the Colts got into the playoffs with a 13 and three record. This year, they're 10 and six. Last year, however, the Colts were tired down the stretch. They barely beat Cleveland, then were blown away by Buffalo before losing to Tennessee in the first ever playoff game at the Dome. This year, Coach Jim Moore feels with a three-game winning streak heading into the playoffs that his team is better, excuse me, better prepared for the postseason this time around. And our guys are geared up. I mean, they'll be they'll be wired up this week. They're not going to be you know they're not going to be tired. They're going to be. They feel like they've got a, an opportunity now that a few weeks ago they didn't feel like, you know, that it was going to be tough to get. And I think they feel like, from a mental standpoint, hey, you know, we got a shot. Let's, 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 we're ready to go. Big things could be ahead for the Colts in the postseason. We'll hear more from Coach Jim Moore in 15 minutes coming up in sports. Ken? Thank you, Tim. You want to see Saturday's game? Tickets for the Colts' first playoff game in Miami will go on sale tomorrow morning at 8.30. 28,000 seats are up for grabs. Call 1-888-FINS-TICKS. Santa was not the only one hard at work on this holiday. Postal workers put in some overtime delivering last-minute presents this Christmas. Eric Knopp knocked on doors on the west side. He was one of many carriers out making special deliveries today. The recent snow created a backlog, forcing the post office to go out today. You know, it is your job, and, you know... You show up and you want to do a good job but you know you see the faces smile a little bit and you can tell people are happy to see you they've been waiting on the presents if you were expecting a gift in the mail today but you were not home it may still be with the post office insured items could not be left on your doorstep christmas is not the same every place you look we'll show you celebrations from different corners of the world when we come back and there's a corner it's actually a full circle it's Monument Circle. Beautiful night tonight. Temperatures cold, but not as cold as they were this morning. I'll have the complete story when we come back. There's a report of a huge tragedy in China. A Christmas night fire at an office building in the central city of Luoyang has killed at least 309 people. Dozens more are reported injured. Among the victims, 200 people trapped in a dance floor on the fourth floor, a dance hall, I should say. It's believed that fire started in the basement of the building. No word on what may have started it. On this day in December around the earth, Christians are celebrating their goodwill. Here's a look at how the holiday was spent all around the globe. It is the day we call Christmas, and starting in Rome, Pope John Paul II led Midnight Mass from his home. At St. Peter's Basilica, he led 50,000 in prayer, calling on world leaders to work for peace everywhere. The purpose, he said, of Jesus' birth, to restore hope to every man and woman on the face of the earth. In Bethlehem, where Jesus was born, there was no celebration as many still mourn. 
It is here that the Mideast conflicts rage on. Celebrating the holiday amidst death, many say, would be wrong. I'm here to celebrate Christmas and uh, I don't take part in any conflict. In her holiday message to people worldwide, England's Queen Elizabeth II said her faith brings her pride. I hope this day will be as special for you as it is for me. May I wish you all a very happy Christmas. For 38 years in Cuba, Christmas was not allowed. But for the third year in a row, some are celebrating and they're proud. Fidel Castro has banned religion since coming to power, but now windows are dressed, Christmas trees allowed to tower. It's pretty cheap time to buy now because it's their low season. So they're pretty desperate for a few dollars, so they drop their prices quite considerably. In the United States, Santa Claus covered lots of ground, making sure he didn't let boys and girls down. And fortunately, he had Rudolph's red nose, as a partial eclipse darkened the path that he chose. No matter how busy he is on the trail, Santa even had time to deliver the mail. But in Kansas City, Santa did have a problem getting stuck in the chimney before hitting the bottom. And Merry Christmas to you. For up-to-the-minute information about many of the stories you see here on 6 News, just log on to our website. It's theindiechannel.com. We're going to log on to Kevin Gregory now and get that all-important six-day forecast. A warm-up, perhaps, Kev? As hot as my coat. <laughs> Red hot in the six-day forecast, which is quite a stretch because temperatures will be in the 20s the next several days, and we're in a holding pattern here with these temperatures way below normal and way below zero. These are morning lows uh, on Christmas morning, 12 below in Lafayette, Terre Haute at 8 below, 9 below in Bloomington, Indianapolis in there, a handful of degrees below zero. I show you that from this morning to show you what tomorrow morning will be like. And it will be warmer, although still below zero by a couple degrees, I think, west central Indiana, three above for Indianapolis, and then in the low single digits also in the eastern portion of the state. That's tomorrow morning. Let's talk about what's happening right now. Lafayette, zero, three above in Terre Haute, four above in Bloomington, Indianapolis, 11 degrees right now. Most low temperatures later this week will stay above zero, so at least we've got that going for us. Temperatures will be in the 20s for highs. Talk about snow. Tomorrow, some snow possible, but we'd see little in the way of accumulation, just a dusting, and the chance of snow about 30 percent. Temperatures tomorrow, with mostly cloudy skies, reach 22 for the high, a little bit warmer in the southern portion of the viewing area. So if it's back to work tomorrow morning, within, uh, what, seven, eight hours, you'll probably be back in the office. Take a look at the uh, circle, 11 above now. North wind at 5. At least we've had a significant break from the winds. Humidity 84%. Started at 5 below zero, warmed to 17 in the last 24 hours. So that's some nice progress as far as the temperature's concerned. Anyone traveling, if you have folks in town that will be leaving tomorrow, if they're heading southwest, that would be the problem area. Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Texas, there'll be some ice problems there, significant problems. Dallas, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Little Rock, Arkansas. But as you get north into Missouri and Illinois, the light snow that will be pushing to the northeast will be just that, light snow, and that's much easier to drive up. Seven in Chicago, 17 Kansas City. Cold air sinks all the way to Florida, so this is really uh, something to deal with for the eastern half of the country. 33 in Dallas now with that rain. Clouds will be moving in tonight. No snow, though. Any snow would develop uh, after rush hour tomorrow. And again, I don't think it's going to create any problems on the roadways during the afternoon tomorrow. Some light snow continues. Temperatures around 22 for the high. As we get into Wednesday morning, double-digit lows. So that's nice, 10 degrees. And later in the week, as we approach 2001, oh. temperatures will be... Uh, around 20 degrees with some light snow possible. Can't complain after what we've been through. Can I just stare at you for a while? Please. <laughs> <laughs> I say that because you'll find out in a little bit. This is a special night for Ken. Well, special night for all of us. Thanks, Kev. Something rare and mysterious in the sky today after sports a solar eclipse is very unique. This one was once in a lifetime. We'll tell you about that. And in sports, the youngest pacer played Santa, dishing out highlights like this, Lamarama Luski. Tim Bragg has all the highlights next.
Good morning. The Indiana Pacers played a Christmas Day home game for the second straight season yesterday as the Orlando Magic visited Conseco Fieldhouse. For the Pacers, it was a chance to break a three-game losing streak and add a little holiday cheer to what has been a tough, uh, tough couple of days leading up to the holidays. We go to Conseco Fieldhouse. Santa Claus, Peyton Manning, both delivered yesterday, or rather Christmas Eve. And yesterday, it was the youngster for the Pacers, 19-year-old Jonathan Bender, getting things going. His second straight start. And you see the replay of his big-time slam jam over John Amici of the Magic Bender, a career-high 20 points today. All right there, you saw Tracy McGrady with the fadeaway. T-Mac also had a big, big day. Reggie Miller misses here. And on the other end, Daryl Armstrong bounces it to McGrady for the two-hand throwdown. 43 points for Tracy McGrady today. Travis Best gives it over to Jonathan Bender, who nails the three-pointer. Bender is a terrific shooter, just still trying to find his niche with the Indiana Pacers. Jalen Rose, a sweet pull-up over Mike Miller. Jalen had 16 in the first half. End of the first half, Reggie he pulls up on the fast break, drills the three-pointer. Miller had 22 for the game. Pacers up 54 to 50 at the break. Third quarter now. McGrady drives on Bender. A sweet finger roll. Two of his, as mentioned, 43 points. He did it in 45 minutes. Reggie here will grab the loose ball. It's a three-on-two break. He gives it to Jonathan Bender, who scores and goes to the line with the foul. Bender helped the Pacers open up a double-digit lead at that point. And then final highlight, Jermaine O'Neal draws the double team, kicks it to the corner. Jalen Rose buries the three-pointer. Rose had 31 points, helping the Pacers to a 103-93 victory, ending the three-game losing streak. Pacers go to 13-16. and Indiana out-rebounded Orlando by eight. Jeff Foster led the Pacers with nine rebounds. The Pacers blocked 11 shots. Next up for the Pacers, a trip to Miami on Wednesday. Afterwards, head coach Isaiah Thomas very pleased with the addition to the lineup with Jonathan Bender, who scored the 20 points. I know how difficult it is to score 10 points in this league. Uh, to get 20 in 24 minutes is um, not very many people uh, have done that coming through the NBA. So, um, you know, we'll continue to tinker and continue to play around and we'll give this uh, lineup some time. Um, but you want to see how it matches up against the rest of the teams also. Also today in the NBA, the only other game on the schedule, Lakers at home against Portland. Kobe Bryant with a sweep behind the back move right there. Now watch the alley-oop to Shaq, throws it down with authority. Shaquille had 32, Kobe had 29, but Portland wins this one, 109-104. You'll see Arvita Sabonis nailed the jumper right here from Damon Stoudemire, who scored 27. Sabonis had 12. Blazers 109-104 winners today. They go to 19-10 L.A., 20-10 with the loss. The Indianapolis Colts are in the playoffs for the second straight season thanks to Sunday's 31-10 win over the Vikings at the Dome. Overshadowed in the emotional victory were some big-time individual accomplishments. Peyton Manning threw his 33rd touchdown pass of the season, breaking the Colts' single-season mark previously held by Johnny Unitas. Marvin Harrison caught three TDs, tying Raymond Berry's season mark with 14. And Edgerin James broke Eric Dickerson's single-season Colts rushing record by gaining 128 yards, bringing his season rushing total to 1,709. Edge also broke Marshall Falk's single season total yards from scrimmage record with 2,303 on the season. James wins his second straight NFL rushing title and the second year player has scored 35 touchdowns in his brief career, the most ever by a player in his first two years. Edron James also broke his own record with 450 touches of the ball this season. He is a workhorse and today at his press conference, Coach Jim Mora told us what he likes most about the edge. I mean, he can run outside, he can run inside. He's an excellent receiver. He's got good hands. But he's tough. I mean, he's just a tough guy. That's what I like about him. And he's a competitor, you know? He just, he just, he, I like tough guys, and he's a tough guy. All right, so the Colts heading to Miami to take on the Dolphins this Saturday at 12.30. You can see it right here on Channel 6 and ABC. Thank you, Tim. Stay with us for a final word. And one of the treasured members of our staff is saying goodbye to us tonight. Hear from him when we come back. Oh. A rare sight in the skies Christmas morning. A partial solar eclipse was visible. The viewing was best in the northern United States. The moon slid between the Earth and the sun, appearing to take a bite out of the sun. Scientists warn about looking directly at an eclipse, but some people did go outside to watch this one. It is the first solar eclipse visible from North America on a Christmas day since 1628. 
And it won't happen again on Christmas Day until the year 2307. Hmm. See, I thought it was Santa that created the eclipse that oh. I had, you know, this morning. Plus, it was some fog. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, you may see a little patchy fog. Temperatures not quite as cold, just below zero to around three above for Indianapolis. That's tomorrow morning, afternoon highs with that chance of light snow about 30% and the temperature around 22. I yield the rest of my time to this young man next to me. Oh, that's just what we need, isn't it? Well, as we all close the books on Christmas 2000, I'm beginning a new chapter in my life and career. This marks my last newscast, at least as a full-time employee of a broadcast operation. After 19 years in professional journalism, almost 15 of those in Indianapolis, I'll be returning to my alma mater, DePaul University in Greencastle, to serve as Director of Media Relations. My job will be to draw media attention from Indiana and across the nation to the great things that are happening on DePaul's campus. I will certainly miss doing this, and I may occasionally pop up on a freelance basis. I want to thank my bosses, my colleagues, and especially you, the viewer, for a lot of smiles, your loyalty, and memories that I'll carry with me for a lifetime. This is something I wanted to do from the time I was a little boy, and thank you for letting me do it. It's been a lot of fun. Kevin? Yeah, congratulations. Thank Are you going to live in a dorm for a while again? I hope to, yeah. I'm going to relive my youth. Tim? <laughs> Good luck, Ken. Thank you, gentlemen. I hope to see you again soon. We'll all be in touch, and thank you again for being so loyal over the years and watching me here on Channel 6. Your first look at overnight news just hours away on 6 News this morning, beginning at 5. Again, a belated Merry Christmas. Enjoy your morning, and thanks for joining us. Good night. Helicopter service provided by ATA, Indy's hometown airline, providing blow fares to Florida, Las Vegas, Cancun, and more.